Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about print on demand everything. So if that is a subject that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to create this design right here. And so I'm showcasing it on a tote bag, but really you can put this design on any product. This is just how I'm choosing to showcase it. And so you can do all sorts of custom photo design products that sell really well on Etsy. So whether it's a custom to uh, tote bag or a custom mug or a custom shirt or a custom blanket or, you know, anything you can think of, you can always do custom photo designs. And specifically for this one, I wanted to show you how you could get that writing that kind of looks like it's going around the heart and then how you can go ahead and, um, you know, put the photo in the heart and how you can, you know, edit it and change it and, and, and scale it out for multiple customers. So, I mean, if this is something that you're interested in learning about, uh, please do stick around. So uh, today I want to show you guys how you can do a design um, using some of the frame features and how you can sort of put text around the outside of a shape. I'm going to keep it pretty simple today. We're going to go with a heart and we're going to go ahead and make it more of that um, custom. I'm going to go with a nice dog quote, but again, you can use this technique for anything once you have it down. But this was a specific question um, that I had on a, on a comment from another video. So let's see if I can figure this out for you. Um, so we're going to go with a custom size. I'm going to do 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Now, again, you can design this for a shirt, a pillow, a mug. I, I mean, the design itself, you can put on anything. I just want to show you guys how you can go ahead and do the design. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a nice black background here. And the design that we're going to make is going to have a, um, a frame, a heart shaped frame with a picture in it. Now this you could sell on Etsy. Um, and it would be really easy to do this as one of those personalized products. And again, you can use any product you want and you'll see when this is done, what that's going to look like, but let's go to the left hand side. And so the tab up at the top where it says elements, that's where we're going to start. Now you're going to go ahead and type in frames. And when you put frames, you're going to get some different uh, options. So it's not graphics. It's not photos. It is literally the one that says frames. And so what you should see is like little green rolling hills with the blue sky. Those are frames that you can go ahead and then drop pictures in. So I can hit see all. Now there are tons of different frames to choose from and they just keep adding more. So if you haven't looked at it recently, there's a lot more now for you to choose from and they are you know, variable from pictures to screens to odd abstract shapes to regular, you know, geometric shapes. And so numbers, letters, all sorts of things that you can use, things that have borders around them. You've got some cool ones like the puzzle piece frame or the stars. Some of those are good. And so uh, that looks like a thermometer. Um, so there really are all sorts of different, there's some flower shaped ones, window ones, mittens. Um, so if you want something really easy, a frame that you can drop a picture in, you can always go ahead and check out frames, see what they have available. You can also use clipping masks too. So if they don't have a frame that you particularly want or not exactly what you're looking for, then I would just go ahead and put a clipping mask over whatever shape I want. But for this, because I just want a heart, it's pretty easy to just use the frame. So I'm just going to pull up that nice heart frame right there. And so there it is. And I'm going to center it. I'm going to make sure I've got some room around it because I'm going to go ahead and put some text around the outside. But there's my frame. Now, if you had somebody who bought a customizable shirt, let's say on Etsy, they're going to send you the photo that they want in the frame. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll get their photo, whether they email it to you or message it to you, and then you will upload their photo here on the side where it says uploads. And from there, you can take their photo and just drag and drop it into the frame. Um, sometimes people will send you photos that aren't super great and you may have to do a little bit of talking with them and communicating with them um, 
about finding the right photo for the design. So sometimes they may need to send you multiple options. And occasionally you may find yourself wanting to do some photo adjustments, you know, adjusting the contrast and everything on the photo to really make it look good um, because you never quite know what people are going to send you. So they can be really great or they can be not so great. And so there is a little bit of that customer service that you will have to do with any type of custom photo design. Um, it's a little bit tougher to do photos than to just say like the custom designs where you put in like names or words. Obviously those are pretty straightforward, but when we're dealing with photos, it's going to be a little bit more variable, but it is a very good thing to sell on Etsy and people love custom photo anything. And of course you can again, put this on any product you want. <clears throat> so with that caveat in mind, I've decided to use one of my photos just to make it easy. So I've already taken my photo and put it into my uploads. Okay, and so the photo that I went with is this one right here. It has um, my son and a dog. And so it was a really cute photo for the quote that I wanted to use. And again, I can just drop it in there. Now, what you'll see with this is that it has cut off the baby's head. Uh, the dog looks nice, but it's not really fitting well. So if I double click on this, it's going to pull up the whole photo. And then from here, I can go ahead and I can kind of move that photo down a little bit. Um, let's see if it will let me. Oh, there we go. It's going to let me rotate it, which is nice. That is something that it didn't used to do. It didn't used to let you rotate the photos, which was really annoying. And that's why I had to use the clipping masks typically a lot because when I would rotate the photo, um, it would just rotate the shape. But now this is very convenient. So it does allow me to, to change the angle of the photo however I want and rotate it to make it fit. Um, and so that is super convenient there. Maybe I want it rotated a little bit more. And so you may play with it. Um, let's see if I can shrink it down so it fits perfectly. And so this photo is going to work out really well for this shape. But again, you never know what kind of photos you may get from somebody. And so not every photo is going to work out well. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so there I have the heart shape with the baby and the doggy. Now it's a little bit hard to see this. I can go ahead and put an outline around this. Now, sometimes it'll let you do outlines around the shape. Sometimes you may have to save it. So let's see if I go ahead and try to put a shadow around the whole thing. Will it let me? I'm going to go with white. Size, eh, no. So it wants to put the shadow, the, the shadow around the photo, but not the mask. Okay, so no worries. So there's two ways that we can deal with this. We can either take this whole thing now and just save it and upload it. And once we have it uploaded, it is now an image that we can use photo effects on. Or if you just want a heart behind that heart, we can go ahead if we can find the same shape heart and just put the same shape heart behind it and just make it a little bit bigger. But I think the easiest way to make sure that we don't mess anything up would just be to go ahead and save this. And so that's going to be the easiest way. So once you get that picture in there the way that you want it, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to title this anything. I'm just going to put heart photo. And I'm going to go ahead, hit download. I do want a transparent background. And we'll just download it. And then we'll re-upload it. Perfect. And now you only have to do this for the step that I want to do, which is to put the, the, the outline around it. If you don't want to put an outline around it, then you don't necessarily have to do this step at all. I mean, if I just wanted to put this on, let's say a white background and I thought it looked good enough like that, and I didn't want any kind of a border, then there's no reason that I couldn't just leave it alone. Um, but if I want to put it on a dark background and I want to be able to put a border around it or anything like that, then the way around it is to do just what I did, which was to download it. Now I'm going to go over to my uploads and upload it. And so now here is my uploaded version right here. And so I'm just going to add a page and bring my uploaded version down here so that you can see it. So now this is pretty much 
like any photo that you would pull up and so you can edit it the same way you would anything else so if i wanted to take this background and put it back to black and then i wanted to put an outline around here i could just click on it go to edit photo now i can go ahead and do shadows and this time it is going to put the shadow around the heart just like that and so something like that is nice and simple there And so there's always roundabout ways to do everything you want. Sometimes you just have to know what to do and how to fiddle with it. And again, I could have easily just done a clipping mask, um, gone over to photo P and done a clipping mask. And so if you've seen any of my other videos where I've used photo P, the process would be the same. It would just be to go ahead and save the heart, um, as a shape, as a background, as a frame, and then save the photo and then go over to photo p and then just put the photo right over the shape and then i would just save it and i would end up putting it in my uploads just like i did here and it would be just like this uploaded and i could put the frame around it so it's always nice to have a lot of different options available to you so now that i have my um now that i have my picture i'm going to go ahead and put the words around it okay and so couple ways that I can do this again because I do want to be able to make it so that I can easily use it in the future um, so let's go ahead we'll leave it here I'm gonna hit text and whenever we're putting words in a weird shape what you're gonna have to do is do it in sections so your first section if I was to just leave this alone and make it white your first section may be something like this. And what you would do is line it up just like that with the side of the heart. And then you would pull up another text box. And this one would now take up the curve. And so what we would do is we'd have to sort of center it and make it a tangent right off the edge. And then we would go to effects, curve, and from here, what we do is we might have to play with it a little bit in terms of the placement, but you can see right here how we are going to get that curve to sort of go around something like that. And then you would have one more, let's say I wanted to do it around, you know, this curve here, same idea. I would come up to effects. I'm going to curve the text and you're going to have to sort of play with the angle and how wide your curve is to try to make it match the edge Ta -da. but this is essentially how you would put words around an awkward shape now hearts you got the curved and the straight if it was something like a star that had all straight edges well then it would be really easy because you would just keep it straight and you would just have to angle it up to to match each side of like the star but when we've got the curved area and the straight area it's a little bit more challenging so but this is how you would do it so let's go ahead and take it all the way through so the quote that i wanted to use was a cute one that said um <clears throat> pause and enjoy the little things and pause was going to be like a dog paw pause um and so what i can do is go ahead and click here and i'm gonna write it in pause and and this one is going to say enjoy the little and then this one would just say things and of course the trick now is to pick your font and make it fit and so this is easy because once you get this done then you don't have to do it every time it'll just be um you know it'll already be done for you and then you can just put the new photo in every time and so that's that's the idea so once you've done it once it's pretty easy so um let's go ahead and pick a font i wanted something that was a little bit more fun handwritten style um usually i want them to be all capitals because i don't like when you've got the like the j or the y that dips below the level um, so whenever I'm doing something that's going around the side or curving, capitals tend to work better. Um, and so it probably wouldn't be a script font, but something that would just be more fun, handwritten style, 
but um, something that would look good in caps. And so what I decided to go with after searching for a while, I did decide to go with one called Fotristar Regular. Fotristar Regular. Okay, that's the one I decided to go with. So it was kind of cute. Handwritten and looks good in sort of this all caps. Um, and so now what we have to do is get the size right. So we have to get the size right and we have to get the spacing right. So this gets a little bit tougher. So from here, I'm gonna bring that down so it's right. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the size up. And I'm probably gonna change the spacing a little bit here too. So what I can do is go up to spacing and change the letter spacing to make that, you know, a little bit longer. So let's say I went with 136. So if I was gonna go with 136, this is 239 and 136. So I just have to remember those numbers. So let's try 239. And then let's go ahead and try the spacing at 130 or 36. Oops. Try to get it as close as possible. There we go, 136. And then this last one, let's try this again. So again, I'm gonna go up to 136 here. And then the size, and the size is 239. Okay, good. So now they're all the same size. They all have the same spacing. Um, I'm gonna have to change the curve here a little bit and still play with it. So let's go ahead, oops, not that. Let's go to effects. Let me bring this curve in a little bit tighter. Okay. So something there looks pretty good. And I'm gonna just sort of try to get it spaced where I want it. By the way, if you have trouble with your mouse, you can always just sort of click on it and use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So up, down, right, left arrow keys, that moves it a pixel at a time. And so sometimes that's easier to get things lined up. So now I've got my pause and so I'm gonna try to get that lined up nicely so that the angle looks perfect. There we go, pause and enjoy the little things. And maybe I wanna actually bring this over a little bit more so that it looks like it's going a little bit. There we go. And then this one, I'm gonna also have to make that um, curve a little bit tighter. So I'll go to effects and I'll make that curve a little bit tighter there so it looks like it's going. Perfect. And so there you go. I've got it written around here. It looks pretty evenly spaced, pretty good. My pause and enjoy the little things. There's a little bit more spacing. Let's see if I bring that down a little bit. Get that a little bit more of a gap there. That looks good. That looks good. Everything looks good. And then one thing I did want to do would be put a little paw print at each end. Um, and so I can do that by going to elements. And then now I'm going to go ahead and put paw print. Oops, I don't want to be on the frames though. So we got to go back to our regular search and go paw print. And here we go. So here are some easy little paw prints. You can do any one that you want. They're all kind of cute. I'm just going to go with a nice, simple, easy one. And I can shrink it way down. And then I'm going to go ahead and play with the angle. And I can throw it right there if I want to. So something like, oops, undo. There we go. Something like that looks kind of nice. Once I have it the size I want, I can hit Control D. That will duplicate the paw print. So now that I know I've got the same size. I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to rotate that paw print around and try to make it look like it goes there. And so that looks pretty cool and now what i can do here would be to group the whole thing together so if i left click anywhere way outside like in a corner and i hold it and i drag over everything 
I can hit group, that groups it all together. And then from there, I can resize it and space it in the page. So it is always a little easier to design smaller to make sure that you've got room around the edges and then to resize bigger when you're done than to start too big and run out of space. And now to make sure that my heart is centered, I'm gonna use my rulers and guides. So if you don't have the rulers and guides on your page, you're gonna to wanna to hit Shift R. Shift R will pull up your rulers and guides. And from there, I can bring a line over and I want to see where the center of my page is. So the center of my page is there. And what I want to do is have my heart centered in the page. And so the writing will go obviously closer to the edge, but you do wanna have the heart centered. And so aesthetically, that is how you would wanna do something like that. And so that is really cool right there. And then again, once I have this saved the way I want, I could still go ahead and take this and let's say somebody gave me another photo. And so let me just go ahead and go to, let me go with baby, baby picture and we'll go with photos. All right, so let's say somebody brought me this photo here. This is the photo they wanted me to use. Okay, so they want me to use that photo. So I can drop that photo now into the frame and do the same general thing that I did before, which is to kind of resize it and angle it and do whatever I have to do to make sure that it looks good in my frame. So something like that. So now the baby looks really cute in the frame. And then all I'd have to do now would be to save this baby. And then I could just put it right in here. So I don't have to mess with the words at all. So to show you what that would look like, I'm just going to do it real quick. Let's go with heart photo. I'll go ahead and download this again, just so you can see transparent backgrounds. Um, oops, I just want the baby. So here I have my heart baby. And this is a much lighter pic picture too. So if I was doing this on a dark background, I might not have to put a border around it at all because it actually looks pretty good by itself. But let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and upload the baby here. And once I have that uploaded, I'm gonna click on it. And then all I have to do now is resize it, essentially, to cover up that heart. And so something like that looks pretty good. Ta-da. And now I've got the same thing. And so anytime somebody sent me a picture, I could do that. I could drop their picture in here, save it, bring it down here to where the words are and just cover up the heart. If I wanted to put the border around it, I could do it the same way that I did uh, with the first photo. Again, you don't have to, but once you have those words saved where they are, then you don't have to do it every time. And so it would be, obviously it would look better with a dog since it said pause and enjoy the little things. But if they sent you a dog photo, um, you would put the dog in there and, and do the same thing. And so you would just keep putting new pictures and just keep replacing. And so that's pretty easy to do. Matter of fact, I mean, if I'm not putting the border around it, I could just take this heart and drag it down. So if I went back up to elements and maybe this time I went with dog, a better example, puppy. Let's go with a puppy. Any puppy, any puppy at all. Something cute. Oh, that one, precious. Okay, so let's say we put that puppy in there. I like it because it fit the right shape with the ears. Okay, so there's my puppy, love it, okay. So there would be nothing stopping me now from just taking this puppy here bringing it down here and putting it again right on top and all i have to do is resize it until it is the right size and boom so just like that um and i might need to bring it down and of course i can use my arrow keys something like that and so you wouldn't even have to save it if you didn't want to do the outline i only saved it so that i could put the outline around it um so i mean once it's all done all you would have to do then would be to go ahead and title it download it with a transparent background and it would be ready to go on whatever product you wanted and of course if you wanted to put a white background we just change the color of the font and if i wanted to have multiple options there would also be nothing stopping me from duplicating this page so if i hit duplicate page now i've got the duplicate copy i could go ahead now if i wanted to and change the background color to white now i could also pretty easily let me get rid of this sucker here take 
this, hit control D so it's in the back. Probably would have been better if I went with a color I could see. Hold on, let me go with more of like a lighter color. Here we go. So now I have my text. I do have to be able to see the text. Let's get rid of that too. Ungroup, because I have that grouped. Okay, so now there'd be nothing stopping me from going ahead and saying, let's say I wanna have a darker version of this. So let's go ahead and change all of this to dark. That way I've got multiple versions going. And so I've got my fonts, black and again, black. And of course, there'd be nothing stopping me from then going to this photo, going to edit photo, going back to my shadow feature. And if I really wanted to, changing the shadow to black. Boom. And now I could change this background color to white. So now I have a white version of the design and I have a dark version of the design. Let me just go back to that. So there you go. Dark version or on a dark background for a light background. And so I can have multiple versions there that I can use. And that's pretty easy to do too. So all sorts of versatility with this. And again, I've got my wording in here. That was the hardest part. And once the wording is in there, you can just keep changing out the hearts any way that you like. And by the way, let's say somebody gave you a picture that maybe wasn't very great. Um, I'll go back to the dog pictures, but let's say this picture didn't look good. It does, it looks so adorable, but let's just say it didn't look good. I could always go to the edit photo, go to the adjust, and let's say that this is the picture that they gave me and it looked really bad. And I was just like, ooh, that's a little too dark. I could always go ahead then and brighten it up. And so I could play with all of these features and get the uh, photo edited however I wanted to. And I could do that before I dropped it into the frame. So if I wanted to change it, however I might want to change it, change the saturation, change the vibrance, whatever. Ever. I could do all that and then put it in the frame. And so I could always, um, you know, edit it to make it look nice. And so here I've got this one too, which I could ungroup if I wanted to. And I could still take my photo here, edit the photo, go to adjust. And again, I could brighten it up a little bit. I think it looks a little nicer in a little brighter color. And if I wanted to maybe saturate it a teensy bit more, I could do that you know, so I just get some more sharper images. And so you can always play with it. Um, so I think I covered everything I wanted to. Sorry, it was a long video and there was a lot of rambling and ranting, but I did want to get all, all the little details out there. If you have any questions about this, I drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. If you have requests for videos, again, you can drop those in the comment section below. Um, I'll try to accommodate you or throw you on my list. Um, and so I hope you guys are doing really well with the rest of your quarter one um, and are getting ready for quarter two. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.